Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, along with Sarah. Hello. And we are broadcasting live for this fun paint pouring demonstration. And I am, I'm actually, this is killing a couple birds with one stone. I've had a few people ask me to do paint pouring. And I've had some people ask me to use my Dr. PH Martin liquid watercolors, which have been sitting, um, sitting on a shelf, embarrassingly, <laughs> sitting on a shelf for like a year. It's, it's unacceptable. No, it's okay. It's so. fine. So I, I came up with a new, I bought one of those shallow bins from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I found, because they're so pretty in their packaging that I just can't use them because they're too cute. So I had to take them out of the packaging, get rid of the packaging, and put them in a like a tray so I could have them all together and actually use them and not feel like I was, you know, I don't know, breaking into them for the first time every time I use them. Um, this video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. I have links to all the products I am using from them. You can find them in the video description. You'll also find a link to my website where you can see the reference photo. This reference, The reference photo I'm working from is from graphicstock.com. And there's also a seven-day free trial that you can uh, click on if you want to download a high-resolution version of this. Um, the thing, like if I'm working with a, um, a photo from graphic stock, I have the permission to teach you, show you it on my website, all of that. But if you wanted to paint it, paint it and then sell it then you would also need um uh to get it from graphic stock but you can you can do that even with a free trial so if you want that if you plan on you know painting it and maybe selling it or something just make sure you have that documentation just to you know cover yourself i didn't realize that the first time i used stuff from graphic stock that that the user also anybody that also painted it had to go had to also download it from there but um now that i know i just want to make sure that i let you guys know so nobody gets into trouble <laughs> oh I am such a nerd. I just read the entire terms of service just oh, to make sure. You? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to because you never know. You don't want to get yep. you don't want to get stuck because you didn't read all the fine print. Exactly. Exactly. They're great over there. Anyway, um, if you have any questions as we're going along, because I know this is new for a lot of people, um, you can type the word "question" in all caps, and Sarah will catch that out of her corner of her eye, and she'll be able to relay the question to me. Um, if you have general questions, the moderators can help you out. We have some fantastic moderators in the group here, and um, I will. I'm I'm new at this. I don't do paint pouring that much, so um, you know, don't take everything I say as law. Try it for yourself. Experiment, and of course watch tutorials from other artists because uh, you'll learn a lot of things that way. So I painted on a block and a block is a pad of watercolor paper that's bound on all four sides. So after you paint a picture what you do is you take a palette knife or a butter knife or a piece of credit card or whatever you have and what you do is you, there's usually like a little notch somewhere that is not glued or if an edge comes up you can just stick the card in there and then you cut that top sheet off. I don't recommend using a craft knife though because you might actually um, slice the paper by accident so you want to use something that's kind of blunt. Probably use like a bone folder just you know something that's fairly uh, fairly strong and thin. Just set that one out of the way. And we're going to begin if you want to sketch I sketched on this like the umbrella girl and just that line and just like a little angled line there. Um, I think I might put move that line either I feel like that that's a little too close to the middle I feel like it either should be over this way a little bit more or over this way a little bit more um, I think I'll move it over this way a little bit more so it's kind of like on that third and I'm going to just put the uh, lines at the bottom of each of the buildings so that I have that little alleyway but I'm not gonna sketch her on first because I think that it made me be a little too fussy when I did that so uh, I've just got a pencil here to do that with I'm gonna go one third down here just to give that building with a doorway an area to be I'm not you know using a ruler you can if you want to and about oh, about a third of the way up from the bottom of the paper I have the bottom of that building and then um, this alleyway I'm gonna have kind of go start over here and just kind of go down like that and that's really all I need to get going if you do need to erase use a very soft eraser I like this um, high polymer by Pentel or any sort of white plastic eraser you can even get them at the dollar store if you know if you need one they usually come in like packs of six as long as it's that white plasticky feeling it's gonna work pretty good holy cow look how white that looks <laughs> like woo well, we blinding. Have actual sunlight along I know the we have Sun outside the window it's very Crazy. Loud. Yeah. Uh, fromage. Hey, Lindsay, does your paper ever crumble on you when you paint? I'm using an XL Canson mixed media paper, and even if I take the sides, it always crumbles. I'm assuming she means buckles. Bucks. 
Maybe Any buckles. Tips? I think because that's only um, like a 90 pound. I think that's going to buckle. It shouldn't like pill if that's what she's uh, what she's meaning. Um, so basically, this paper is super wet. It is very wet. It's uh, it's glossy and puddly and you need um, you need that water to be the vehicle for your inks. And I'm going to start off with my lighter color. I'm actually going to do a lot of yellow. So if you're using, there's a couple of liquid watercolors by Doc P, Dr. PH Martin. There's the high dress and these are pigmented um, watercolors. So they're, they're um, not going to fade on you. Then there's the radiance. The radiance are more transparent, but they are made with dyes and they eventually will fade on you. So just keep that in mind for this lesson. It doesn't matter what you use. You could even use, um, you know, inexpensive children's liquid watercolors or even your regular watercolors, but you'll want to get like a palette that's got little cups or something in it so that you can, or recycle some applesauce cups or something so you can mix up the liquid wash that you're going to need. So it really doesn't matter whatever kind you want to use. I just thought it was a great opportunity to use this. So I'm going to start just by using the droppers that are here in these bottles and um, I am going to drip on some color where I want the uh, yellow. And you'll notice if you haven't used your uh, that if you're using the hydrus ones, if you haven't used the hydrus paint in a while, you're gonna notice that um, sediment will collect. Those are the pigments separating out of the um, out of the uh, the liquid, the water. So you'll need to shake them up good before you use it. Uh, Danielle Grader, how are your DIY water block watercolor blocks holding up? Oh, they're great. I don't do them really big. I tend to make the smaller ones for travel, but they work great. Um, I've used up, um, most of, I've used up, I think all the ones I made last summer and, um, I've made quite a few, so they, they worked really well. Uh, art by C. Riley. Can you make a dry palette with the hydras? Do you need to add anything to them? You can, but I don't recommend it. They don't re-wet as well as, um, as like a tube paint and they get like a, just a really like thin film. Um, when they dry out. So I just, I think they're much better to leave in their concentrated form. I think if you want to make your own, your own uh, dry palette, use like a tube watercolor. And I think I'm going to add the, the magenta up here. Just be careful that you don't wear your paint because some of those colors mm -hmm. will stain. And I am going to kind of help it along a little bit. You can guide how you want it to flow. Uh, Abby Vanderfluem, can I use Ecoline watercolor for this? Yes. I've never used that brand, but yeah, that's a, I think that one might be a little bit more like the um, Radiance. It's a very popular uh, brand in Europe. You could even, I mean, it, I think it would be kind of expensive, but you could use like reinkers even. And so we want the rain, this is a rainy scene, so we want the, um, any kind of flows and drips to be kind of vertical, kind of like rain would fall. So by tipping it back and forth, this way, I feel like we get a much better uh, much better flow. Some really cool effects there. Now I think I want to add a little bit of blue down towards the bottom. It will get a little bit a little greeny because it's going to mix with the gamboge. But since the gamboge is a warmer yellow, it shouldn't um, it shouldn't be too bad. A little bit up there too. I love the droppers in here. It makes it really easy. So you'd want to tape this to a board if you didn't have um, you didn't have a, a block of color. And your brushes are going to need a really good washing. Any brushes that you use with this, because they are. Is a really strong pigment. Uh, Monica Pala, is it possible to use brushos? Um, 
mixed with water. Oh, sure. You can mix you can mix up brush on water in cups and do that. Uh, Brenda Collins Deeks. For some reason, I thought you'd be dragging the paint down with the credit card scraper. Would that work? Um, you you would end up scratching your sur the surface of your paper, and anytime you painted over that, you would end up with streaks. So, um, if you were to do that, you'd have to be really careful and make sure that the lines would work with your design, which I guess it could on a um, on a rainy picture. All right, now I'm gonna grab a brush here and try to grab one of the mimics because they're really thirsty. I want to draw, um, I want to move around some of that pigment. So I'm just gonna like set it, set my blotted off brush in a puddle and soak up what I can from that bead and add some in. Kinda get the values assigned. I know I want some more dark down on that end, so I am just going to try to kind of scoop it up. Actually, I might be able to use a, a pipette there. If you have enough of a puddle, you might be able to just kind of suck some of it up with another eyedropper or pipette. You can usually get these in, like, packages of 50. They don't last forever. They'll get, like, I feel this, this one doesn't have very much suction anymore. They get little... I think they split on the seam sometime and then they don't work quite as well. Kind of like how you never really know what you're going to get with this technique. Different every time. Right. Uh, Sherry Vaughn, how do you hide the pencil sketch marks in a watercolor painting? I usually don't hide them. You can. Um, you can erase them if they're not trapped under too much paint a lot of times. I am kind of dragging some of that color around to get the bottom of our building line. And I'm going to blot out a couple spots for street lights. Let's see if I can blot one out there. I like doing that better than trying to paint around them. I painted around them in the original uh, demonstration photo, and I didn't like that quite as much. Um, I'd like to reiterate, Lindsay said in the video description and at the start of the video that if you don't have these particular paints, you can use your regular watercolors. We have multiple yes. multiple people asking oh, yeah. that very Absolutely. question. Use what you have at home if you don't have these. Yep, and just get like a, if you have, um, if you have a palette with really big wells, you can mix up your washes in that and get like a little pipette or eyedropper. But if you don't have an eyedropper, you'll want to mix it up in like a little cup that you can pour, like um, a recycled applesauce cup or um, a cap, bottle cap or something, anything like that that you can get. You don't want to mix up too much paint that you're not going to use, but you'll, you'll need to have something you can pour. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I'm also going to blot out some area for that um, doorway because that's where our umbrella lady is going to be kind of coming out of. And this is an inexpensive paper. It's a Canson Montville, so I don't want to be too rough and wipe. Um, just kind of drag down with a paper towel. But if you were using arches or a more um, robust paper, you could do that. And you'd get a straighter line on the edge. And I think it would look a little bit better. But I don't dare do with this paper because I think I might just end up uh, ruining it. I feel like I'm channeling Cinnamon Cooney today with the Umbrella Girl. She does a, um, she's done a few Umbrella Girls. Doodle Sam is Juan brilliant, good for skin tone base. Op opacity is not a concern with me. Um, it you know, I don't really care for it. I think it's a little too um, orange and chalky. 
looking. Um, I'd rather mix from ultra, ultramarine, uh, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. And I find that I can get a huge variety of skin tones depending on how I alter. And I can add a little um, burnt, burnt sienna into that if I need to as well. Brenda Collins Deeks, would you mask for the Umbrella Lady instead of lifting? The Umbrella Lady is going to be dark, so I don't need to. Um, I don't need to lift. She's going to be silhouetted because there's a. She's going to be in front of this doorway that's really bright, so I don't have to worry about that so much. The only thing you could possibly mask would be the um, the lamp posts, but I think that um, it would kind of take away some of the. Um, it's got a very spontaneous feeling when you do this type of technique, and I think it would take away some of that spontaneous feeling. All right, I'm just going to take a quick look for any puddles that might give me blooms. I don't think I have any real severe puddles, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this. So if you have any questions, now would be a really good time to uh, get them in. Oh, I think I might want to actually put a, lift out a little window over here because I like that I had a window in this one. Um, but I don't really have room for it on that side of the building. So I'm going to put one on the other side of the building. A lit up window. Doodle Sam, what's a good rose color? Um, I really like Quinacridone Rose by Daniel Smith. That's probably my favorite one currently. Quinacridone. Okay, now I can draw that. The thing is, this does take a while to dry. I was letting it air dry earlier, and I think it took like half an hour for this background to dry. It's crazy. We could actually set it out in the sun today if you had to. I know, really. I didn't even think of that this morning. Wow. wow. So used to having yeah <laughs> clouds, and rain, and rain, and rain. Oh, it's been so rain. Ugh. Rain. Five seconds of sun. Yep. Oh, rain. Clouds. Rain. Uh, Dr. Martin, are these ink or watercolor, and do you use like watercolor? These are watercolors. These hydras are just like your regular um, pigmented watercolors. They uh, even I'm seeing this one. They list your big like this is um, turquoise. It uses PB15, which is what you know as um, phthalo blue. Uh, actually, this is PB uh, PB15 PG7 light fastness number one. So these do have that listing on the big bottles. I'm not sure if the little bottles do have the information on it or not, but um, they also have inks. Like, I think you could use Bombay inks for this as well. The only thing is you wouldn't be able to scrub back to the paper if you needed to, but we don't really need to do that much. So if you have Bombay inks and you want to try them for this, go ahead. Uh, Jibby, is it possible to get this opaque look with watercolor? Yeah, we're using watercolor. Sapphire winds, how can you stop the colors from mixing too much and becoming muddy? Um, the key is not to mix them, to put them on kind of straight. Um, I will be doing some color mixing um, in my palette to like make some secondary colors, but by putting these colors pretty much in their pure state, the pure yellow, the pure uh, magenta, and the pure blue, they're mixing on the paper, So and they're so concentrated, there doesn't seem to be a lot of um, like uh, opacity to them or muddiness to them, so they stay nice and clear as when all three mix together you start to get like these olive, olive greens and um, you kind of blackish purples and then when we do our final step we're actually going to use black and uh, and that's going to kind of cut through all those colors you could also use like a, an India ink at that stage too and I didn't decide I wanted to do that until I was like at the end of the demo painting all right, now I'm going to turn it upside down because I wanted to find the bottom of uh, this building here a little bit. And I am going to actually apply that with a brush. I'm going to mix up some purple. So I've got my little palette here. And I'm going to do like a dropper full of the magenta. I'm going to use quite a bit of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a full dropper full. And I think I'll start with like half a dropper full of the, um, the turquoise and see how that looks. That looks about right. And then I am going to just kind of put a few dabs of it kind of where I want it. Just a little bit over here to define the edge of that building. 
And then I think I'll just give it a little spritz and let it kind of go. And don't worry if it's not perfect. It shouldn't be perfect. It should be very, um, very fluid. Add a little of the magenta right into that wet uh, drip and let that go. And if you do need to help it, just kind of grab a brush and guide it to where you want it to be. I don't find that the liquid watercolors have as much shift from what to dry as um, as other colors do. I'm just defining around that window. I have a harder. I don't paint abstract very often, so it's it's. Um, I needed something to go by. I'm also defining the top of the edge of that door. So I want it to, uh, that's kind of like a focal point. That needs to be kind of bright and crisp so that the uh, the umbrella girl can kind of show up against it. I just painted some water above that and let the paint flow. You can draw with the eyedropper as well if you want to. It'll give you a very kind of abstract line. Just uh, make sure you don't you don't contaminate your colors when using the eyedropper. Make sure you keep the one color to each each uh, bottle. That's probably why I don't use them that often because. Um, I'm so used to just, I just want to sit down and paint when I want to paint and working right, it's like working right out of the tube of paint. You don't want to like contaminate everything. So sometimes when I want to force the run, I'll, I, look, I've got that wet paint there and I want to make it move, but I don't want to paint it. So what I'll do is I'll paint water where I want it to go. And then I'll go over to that area and I'll just touch the edge of it into the wash that I just put down the water and then I'll just let it flow. And then I can, I can still let it do its thing, but um, I'm giving it constraints. I'm getting, I'm guiding it where I want it to go. I wonder how quickly people go through their bottles of, of paint. I can see this getting pretty addictive. Yeah. Or and you know, this would be fun too if you had kids, like they're yeah. a little older, because then they could totally just do some fun abstract stuff. Oh my gosh, you could make like a tapestry for your wall or something. Mm. I've been looking at yeah, tapestries. You can use that stuff on oh fabric too, right? Yeah. Well, the radiance. If you want it to use on fabric, you want to mm -hmm. get the radiance because that okay. is a, a fabric dye as well. The pigment will wash out, but the dye won't. Wash out within reason. I mean, don't splash this all over your clothes thinking you're going to be able to wash them. <laughs> and there's going to be some staining, but, you know, it's uh, if you want to stain your clothes on purpose, you know, you want the radiance. Okay, so I feel like the edge of that building, now that I'm looking at this right side up, that this needs a little bit of uh, do something to bring that over. Oh, you know what? I can actually probably make my barrier line here with water and then tip the picture sideways and let some colors float in that way. Especially since I have a big puddle there. And I want to thank everybody that um, gave me such wonderful support last week. My uh, class launched very well. I have um, 
many students, and I am super excited. It's um, Round yeah, of yeah, and everything's working. I, you know, because like then you go, okay, everybody's there. Oh, I hope they like the class, and it's like, oh, I hope everything works. <laughs> and so far, so good. We had a couple minor technical difficulties, but nothing that we haven't been able to uh, to fix and figure out. So, uh, so it's been really, really great. Um, just don't forget us little people on your rise <laughs> to the top of the crafting and art world. Never. <laughs> I can come be your cook. <laughs> awesome. When can you start? <laughs> okay. I think I will go ahead and sketch in the Umbrella Girl because um, I don't want to... Um, Although I'm going to use black, her, I'm going to use some black on her, but you know, I'll use a black later. I think I'm just going to go ahead and um, sketch her with, I think I'll start with the magenta. I'm going to mix up a little magenta and yellow in a little well here. Hit some yellow left for my practice one, so maybe I have enough. I think so. So when I'm doing something like this on a painting for real, what I like to do is make things smaller than I think, and then I can always go out. So starting with the um, the umbrella, I'm just going to do kind of a semicircle. Get her head, a little bun on there. Got a hood, I think. A you know, little line down to her waist. Her coat's kind of blowing in the breeze. Uh, Doodle Sam, an what is an al alternative to cobalt blue? Ultramarine and water, because cobalt's a very similar hue, but it's just um, it's just a fainter color. I think Chewie's getting all of the crumbs up for you. Oh, good. I threw some treats to the cats last night, and they weren't very impressed for whatever reason. Of course so, they were, because they're cats. Yeah. Ungrateful beasts they that are they are. They are ungrateful, yeah. They don't, they don't care about your feelings. No. You have no feelings, as far as they're concerned. And you don't count. Unless you're feeding them or yeah. petting them. Even then, it's still a very... Mm. Uh, mm. Could change at any moment. Yep. Oh, they were mad at me. I put their flea stuff on them last night. Their flea uh, tick stuff. Yes, my cats do not enjoy that either. They just don't understand it's for their own good. And are good, so they don't bring in Lyme disease or whatever the newest tick-borne illness is that's sweeping the sweeping northeast. The yeah. So now I'm just dripping in that mix of purple. It, it's just that same blue we were using and the uh, and the magenta. Judith A. Rowland, mm -hmm. Roland, can this technique be used with Golden's high flow acrylics on an absorbent ground? I think you could use it with the high flow acrylics on any, yeah, on any canvas. I don't think you need absorbent ground. Oh, wait. Uh, Jibby, what is the longest painting you have worked on? Oh, gosh. I've done some oil paintings that took me weeks. Um, but I haven't done that in a long time. That was back when I was teaching in my studio, teaching oils. So I'd have some going for for a long time. Especially if you're doing realism in oils, it just it takes time and takes layers and glazes. Okay, so now I want to work on her shadow. I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to pull water and then add the pigment to it. Some sort of light. I think a light source. Some big light source over here that's sending that shadow. Oops, 
some water in there to help it go. <laughs> Chewy can be any closer to the cat box without her head oh. actually being in the cat box. Gross, Chewy. <laughs> just the same thing with the cat food in the living room. She'll lay just, just mere couple hairs width away from the food dish. <laughs> just, just in case. Why does she tempt herself so? I don't know. Mix up, up a little bit more of that orangey color. That uh, yellow is very strong, that gamboge. Love it. I love a strong yellow. Me too. Yellow's a pretty color. You don't see yellow used that much. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, I, I don't look good in yellow, so I don't ever get to wear it. I think yellow is a tough color to wear. It is a tough color to wear. <clears throat> okay, she's in there. I'm just seeing if I want to maybe define the umbrella a little bit. It's kind of since the umbrella girls are so popular, it can they can look a little cheesy. So I'm just trying to. Oh, now she looks like she's big, big beak face. Oh, that was not better. <laughs> I mean, she does have a big beak face. It's Miss Peregrine. It Peregrine. <laughs> uh, Brenda Colin speaks. Should we do all of this wet in wet into wet in one sitting, or can we let the layers dry in between at certain points? Well, the the background is dried once. Remember when we used the hair dryer? So yeah, there's definitely different layers and different levels of drying here. So you would be proud of me, Lindsay. Oh, yeah? We had the bachelorette party last weekend. Yep. And me and the two girls that we were sharing room, we were the one, we were the first ones up and out the door and ready to go. So yeah. we were in Coral and we're like, well, where do you want to go? And I'd mentioned maybe going to Michael's, but then someone, someone else wanted to go to Trader Joe's. And I was like, all right, let me go and see what the coupon is for Michael's and what's mm -hmm. on sale. It was only a 40% off coupon and nothing I was, I was looking at to buy was on sale. So we didn't go. Very proud of myself. Oh, way to resist. So we went to Trader Joe's instead. I've never been to Trader Joe's. I've heard it's awesome. I wonder why we don't have one up in Bangor. I don't know. I think must they I'm sure they'll be up here at some point. Uh Ashley Smith, is the light fast rating higher or lower for a longer lasting color? It, well, it depends on what paint you're looking at because um, some companies do it opposite, but usually the lower the number, the better the light fastness. But you have to look because like, um, I know Mission Gold and Holbein, I believe are opposite. They do theirs, um, I think like a five is really good and a one is really poor. So you just have to make sure you know what the manufacturer's rating is and you can find that information on any of their websites. Because some companies go by the blue wool scale, and uh, some go by the ASTM. If you're looking at ASTM colors, most color like paints made in the United States will go by ASTM, and uh, lower the number of the highest. And you want to stay in like the number one and two range. If you're doing, you know, something that's not going to be reproduced that you want to last. Now I'm going to drag some of that color um, into the. Uh, into the street here. So I'm going off kind of perpendicular. These are horizontal, horizontal lines. Actually, I think I want to do something with just water and then add oh, the color to it. Me. I slept in this morning. I should not be yawning. My gosh, I've been sleeping so well this week. Like oh, just good. exhausted. Like I, it was like 10 o'clock. I'm like, I got to go to bed. I am so tired. Yep. And, um, and I was just out like a light and I slept until my alarm clock went off. And usually I don't, I'm usually awake before my alarm clock goes mm -hmm. off. And uh, yeah, I must've needed it. I think I might've mm. been a little stressed last week getting ready for the cl my, my class launch. Right. I think finally when it's like, okay, it's all going, it's all going, okay, okay. I can use so most of the, it's all worked out. Yeah. Well, I, I think just the weather, I don't know. Yeah. Cause I got up yesterday and I woke up, I don't know, I was up to like 6.30, got up and did the, you know, took care of the animals, blah, 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 made some coffee, you know, had a couple cups of coffee, but mm -hmm. I went back to bed and read in bed for a while. Then I got up, did a couple things around the house. It was like 9.30, I was like, I don't have anywhere to go or anything to do. And I went back to bed. 
awesome. read for a half an hour and took like an hour and a half long nap. I wow. can't remember the last time I did that. I'm not a napper. I get very, uh, like, I'll wake up, my heart will be racing. I'll be, I always mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, I could be a napper regularly, but I don't let myself nap because what happens is when I nap, I set, I nap for, you know, a couple of hours. And if I don't do it early enough in the day, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm up till two o'clock in the morning. Oh, it smells like spray. It does. It sounds like somebody's burning some brush up there. Uh, Amy Lewis, can you use watercolor canvas for acrylic painting? Yep. I don't know if you'd like to. I don't know if it'd be uh, advantageous. It's going to drag a, a little because it's a rougher and more absorbent. So you're going to probably want to use some medium or uh, something to make it link your paint glide a little bit better. I'm just dry brushing a little bit of uh, color in the doorway there. And I think I need to define my lights here. And I'm actually going to go in and put some yellow on them. Wait. Oh, I need to get some yellow. And I don't want to dip my brush in the um, bottle because I don't want to contaminate it if my brush isn't completely clean. It's been rinsed, but, you know, the rinse water's got, you know, uh, well, it's tap water, so it could have who knows what in it. See if I can lift more out of that window while I'm at it. She's using a big hog brush here. You are typing like oh, wildfire. Well, uh, someone's giving me a hard to like thank you me for yawning because now they were. Uh, Brenda was asking. Brenda Collins Deeks was asking me because uh, last week we've been talking about the Irish Spring in your garden. Irish uh -huh. Spring soap in your garden. It keeps deer and stuff out. She was just asking me how I put it in the garden. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Brenda, I'll be ready to mail your painting probably in a week. It's still a little bit tacky on the leaves, but I gotta, uh, so it's gonna dry a little bit longer. She bought the magnolia painting. Mm, very nice. All right, so I think around my little lamp post, I'm gonna go and add some. I'm setting my glass. For sure. Add some color around there. Don't want to get into where I've just added a little bit of yellow, but. Kind of a little negative painting around that area. And then I'm just going to clean my brush. I'm going to wet underneath it, not right up to it quite yet, until I have my path made. And then I can touch into that wet paint and let it drip. And I can just pull that color up and off to the side. I don't know how people live in places where it rains all the time. I think that would really get to me after a while. Just the yeah. spring has been Ugh, so tough. rainy. <laughs> tough. It's been a tough spring. Yeah. I guess maybe if you grew up in it, but still. I mean, I've always wanted to go to Seattle, you know, Oregon, Seattle to uh -huh. visit, but I don't think I could ever live there just because certain part, you know, especially near the coast, it's just rain all the time. Hmm. Damp and cold. My arthritis would not enjoy the damp. Oh cold. yeah, that would. Be I would awful. just be a stiff board all, the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Doing the same thing around this light here. I just want to kind of have it a bright, bright spot in the darkness. And then again, make the path of where you want it to go, and then touch into the edge of it so it can flow. Uh, oozy woozy. I was wondering what to use on top of a painting to preserve it, like a watercolor painting, gouache painting, acrylic painting, charcoal, and chalk. Um, well, you know, there's a really nice tutorial on my friend Angela's YouTube channel, Angela Fair. Um, I think her channel is just called Angela Fair. And um, she's got a method where she, um, I believe she waxes it with like a door lens wax. And then she goes over it with an acrylic varnish. Or maybe it's an oil-based varnish. I'm not sure, but she's got this multi-step process. And she mounts her some of her paintings to these little panels, and they're really cute. So I would go check that out. Just um, I would Google her name and um, 
canvas and watercolor mounting or something and, you, and you'll find it you'll find her channel anyway i think she posted that like in december or something it was a really interesting technique i haven't tried it yet but i did buy the wax so i could sometimes you have those little uh frame like six by six frames at the dollar tree and they'll have like inspirational they're just like a box like a panel mm. and have like a inspirational phrase on it or something and i thought that would be really cool to do that that technique with the mount the watercolors on top of that probably just so at first with some acid free primer and go on top of that i think it looked really cool okay let's see now i think i'm going to dry this again and then we can put on some uh we can drag on some rain it seems like the liquid watercolors don't bloom as much as the regular ones and maybe i just haven't hit a many puddles i'm not sure Any questions popping up? Yep. Yeah. Uh, who wants to know, do you seal all your paintings? I don't seal any of them unless they're not going to... Actually, I haven't sealed any of them. They just go into a, into a clear bag, um, a free bag, or they get framed under the glass of the mat. I might seal, like I might wax a, a postcard, like if I made a watercolor postcard, wax that before I mailed it, but that's about it. And I just rub it with a bar of paraffin wax and then blast it with a heat tool to melt it and seal it. That's that's all I do. But, you know, I don't know how archival that would be. I kind of feel like I want a little more blue in here. So I'm going to try adding that and then spritzing it and letting it flow because I just, I feel like I had that in this one. And I just like the way it looks. So I kind of want to put some of that in here as well. I feel like there's too much yellow here so maybe i'll actually spray first uh amberly corkinson what is the best way to get larger watercolor splatters i tried several ways and only got tiny spots which kind of ruined what i wanted and i asked her what brushes she had used so mm -hmm. get back down she used all different round brushes and a three flat um i would use a big floppy juicy round For the bigger the splash, the uh, the more paint and water you need in a floppy brush. You want tiny splashes and you flick with like a toothbrush or a stiffer brush. If you get too much, you can um, blot it a little bit or just kind of pick up some of the color and then redistribute it somewhere else. Uh, Brenda Collins Deeks, I'm just thinking we could put salt on the yellow to make it look like raindrops on the ground. What do you think? Uh, if you want to do salt, you have to do it when it's really wet. And that particular. That would be like you do eye. that. Yeah, you'd want to do that in the first, uh, probably the first. Uh, layer and then you'd want to let dry really good then you want to remove the salt like I should have done this blue on that first layer because it would have been a lot easier to to control and blend in and stuff learning together, We're learning together. yes we are and no two will be the same <laughs> Definitely need the two buckets of water this time because that you get a <laughs> lot of murky water. I'll have to try this. I have some inexpensive acrylic paints I can water down for Eleanor and let her try. Oh yeah, something like this because she'll be she's not even five. She was, she's almost five, so acrylic would be a lot easier to clean up than off of her than <laughs> than these. <laughs> well, acrylic's permanent when it dries, though. Watercolor might be a little. Food well, coloring. Give her food coloring. Although that does stain. That does stain. <laughs> well, no, I'm thinking acrylic as far as off of her skin. Oh, yeah. more what I'm thinking. Like, 
yeah. not her clothes so much because I can, you know, put an apron or something around her. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, like, to actually, like, stick her in a tub and wash uh -huh. her off. You <laughs> probably just come off better. <laughs> Got too much yellow over here. I want to put a little bit of that pink in there and let it flow. Uh, Deborah Sullivan, what what good is Viridian? I got a small tube, a tube and a small set of mission gold that looks anything but realistic. Um, is it? I wonder if it's true Viridian or if it's PG thirty six or PG seven. Um, because true Viridian is a mineral color and does have an interesting texture to it. It's a very it's a softer green, but it is that kind of unnatural tone um but it's useful just for like softer washes uh, i don't personally like it that much there's also viridian hue which is i think it's pg 36 or pg7 and that's really nice if you mix it with like gamboge or a or a uh like a orange a really light orange cadmium orange or something because it gives you a beautiful sap green color and you can adjust it because you're mixing it yourself instead of just relying on the the store bought Now here I'm going to pick up some excess paint from one area of the painting and, and bring it over here. So that's one way to kind of repurpose the paint so you don't have to go and get fresh and help balance out your colors. And if you start to get mud, just rinse your brush off. Uh, Kendall Macaulay, when you spray over the dry layers, does it just reactivate them? It really doesn't. Um, if they're fully dry, especially with the, with this uh, watercolor, um, it would on some. Uh, like if you're using a student watercolor, I think it would. But this is such a, a loose type of technique that I really wouldn't worry about it too much because I don't think you're. If something blurs, it's not really the end of the world. You're not looking for perfect shading and right. colors. Right. Any real defined things will do with the black at the end. And I chose to use black rather than just mixing because we do have so many mixes that are dark and I needed something that was really going to give me some contrast. Ink would have probably been better because it would have had a little bit of sheen to it as well. Blue in there. So you're pretty much like when you're doing something like this, you're really going with your gut. You know, because you because even if you're following a picture, you you need to look at that and say, okay, what what does this area need? Does that area need more dark? Does it need more light? Does it need more of this color or that color? What haven't I seen in a while? I hope that's not crazy. I'll listen to. No, no, it's fine. Okay, so let's dry this and then we can use the black. I do want to put a little bit of yellow in that window. We're first. using black. We are, I am feeling whoa, wild today. Feeling wild. Oh, whoa, whoa. Spring is here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's time and a place for everything. <laughs> There, get that yellow in there. All right, then we dried. Perfect time for questions if you have any, because this is going to take a few minutes. Yep, come on, people. Put, type out your questions. Lindsay's got a few minutes. I'm going to listen to me talk, so. We all listen, like listening to you talk. I No, I don't even like listening to myself talk sometimes. I'm like, what do you stop? stop. <laughs> Although I will say, I have been thinking hard about pizza all day today. I oh, think yeah? I might have to have pizza for supper. Are you going to make it or buy it? Go order it. I'll go order. Yeah. Go order it. I don't, because I don't, I don't use, like, the canned spaghetti sauces or anything, because they have so much sugar in them. Yep. So I'd have to make the sauce. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have anything to make the pizza on, so I'd have to go buy something. Oh, yeah. You know how a cookie sheet? I have a cookie sheet, but I don't have anything to make the pizza out of. Oh, look, okay, I have like a crust. A oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dialiala, is it true you can turn any watercolor into a gouache by adding white gouache? Yep. So by the time I would get to the store, get the stuff I would need to actually make the stupid thing, make it, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might as well order it. Just order a small one and go pick it up because, yeah, I don't have, I don't even have dough because I don't eat a lot of bread or anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't keep dough or anything in the house, especially with John. Mm -hmm. Not around. Like, <laughs> it was so bad before. Oh my gosh, look at my hands. <laughs> You're beautiful. Oh, man. Beautiful. Oh, I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and put it on my plate. It's kind of off camera, but I'm just going to put a little drop of that onto a plate so I can do some dry brushing. And you're gonna want a fan brush for this. So this is my fan brush. It's just uh, one I would use for oil. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that paint because it is really strong. So I'm adding a couple brush brushfuls of water to dilute that a little bit. And I'm scraping the edge off on my plate. And what I'm gonna do is actually practice going from the top of my paper down because if I do get too heavy handed at the beginning, then it, it's not really gonna matter because everything is going to be oh like see that's way too much i got way too much there we go so this is a, a dry brushing technique and it really you don't want to have too much on there i'm borderline having too much you just want to try to use your whole arm to drag the paint you need enough on there so you don't have to push for it to release but you don't want so much that you're getting like really, really solid streaks. If you have to push, you need to reload. And I tap, tap, tap to reload so that it helps spread the bristles apart. And tap off any extra like if you were stenciling. this yellow area last because that's what's going to show the most and get your bearings a little bit first and you can scrub off a little bit if you're quick i'm going to switch to the maxine's mop for that because it's a little bit smaller and easier to handle i got too much blue on that over that light so let's see if i can scrub some of that away uh katarina Anjos. Uh, I'm completely new to watercolor. I've seen some colors having the word hue in front. Is that different from the ones that don't? Yep, it means this is a synthetic, um, it's a synthetic version uh, to replicate a more expensive pigment or a toxic pigment. So cobalt blue hue does not use cobalt blue. It probably has ultramarine and white in it. Um, cadmium red hue doesn't have cadmium in it it has a synthetic non-toxic version or less toxic version so it keeps the price down and it also gives you an alternative if you don't want to have the toxic chemicals all right so now i'm going to use black and i'm actually going to um i have a brush i've only used this for the black this in the liner i've only used in black so i will dip in there because i know those brushes are really clean and I'm going to use the bigger brush, this uh, this dagger, because it holds a lot of a lot of paint. I'm going to use those to do like the little lamp posts. And because this is kind of abstract, I'm not going to be really um, really detail. I'm going to drag this till and then kind of lift up so there's no, it doesn't show exactly where the lamppost stops and starts. I'm just going to be very vague about it. I'm also going to put some windows in our building up here and they're going to kind of, well, I'll put the roof line on. I'm just going to go in kind of like that with the roof line. Well, people are nice. They're giving me ideas to make my own pizza, but everything they're offering uh, I either don't like or I don't have. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I have celery, Bloody Mary mix, Eggs. <clears throat> yeah, breakfast pizza. Um, some salad fixings. Let's see. That's what I should do. I shouldn't keep any of this stuff in my house, and then I would be. I I can't. I won't be able to because I've been trying to cut back on the white. If I have if that stuff is in the house, I will eat it, and then right. I won't stop, and then I feel terrible. Like I physically right. feel awful, and then I'm like, why did you eat all that? So I think I'm just going to man up and just order a small pizza and be done with it. I'm using the side of this brush to get some really just big abstract 
and the windows in there. So these, this is a building with lights off, and nobody, nobody, uh, nobody home, nobody window, nobody in the windows. Aww. I know, it's sad. Aww. This lonely umbrella girl in the street. Oh, she's lost. She's dropped her map. Her phone battery's dead. Bad part of town to be walking around <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> yeah, we hit a bad part of town in Portland. And oh, the bad, no. I was like, oh, we need, we, whoa, not good. We're like, we need to keep moving. This is not the area for us. <laughs> the most cityest city in Maine. All right. Um, and I think I'm going to put some phone telephone wires. I'll do a couple with the, um, well, I think I'll do one or two with this wide brush. I'll do some with a liner because it is, does get a little bit difficult to, to get a really fine line if you're doing curves. And I'll grab the liner. A liner is simply a round brush with long hairs. And it holds a lot of watercolor. So again, I'm going to reiterate, if you're using the liquid watercolors, they do seem to be more concentrated and more potent. So you will want to wash your brushes with like a mild soap and water when you're done instead of just rinsing them. Otherwise, you could get a surprise the next time you go to <laughs> paint. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. I didn't want to use that color today. Happens a lot in my classes because they like I have supplies like down at the library, especially the supplies that everyone shares. And uh, some people are not very good about cleaning their brushes, and then like the next person to use them gets a little little surprise. I said, wash your brushes good before you use them, because you never know. All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna find another brush that I know is clean and actually paint uh, just a little bit of darker color on the girl here, just on kind of more on the shadow side. And I can see that my uh, the umbrella dripped a little bit going up, but I'm not going to worry about it. And this is great because you can give those really expressive strokes because they're not going to be super, they're not going to show up a lot here because you have these dark colors underneath. But they'll give you that they'll give you that extra movement mm -hmm. and attitude that you need. Okay, well, I'm thinking, although I did a lot, it seems like I did a lot more to the other one. I'm not exactly sure why it looks like that. Maybe I was bolder with the colors on the other one. Let's dry this and see what we what we end up with here. But I think it was pretty much. Oh, you know what? I did some more colors on the ground. That's what it was. Um, and they did that with a brush. So I'm going to squirt out a little bit more of that magenta color. And I've already, I still have some blue left from the dragging of the raindrops. And I'm going to get a kind of a, well, actually, I'll just wash off that dagger brush and use that because that's a pretty juicy brush. Even though it's not a very big brush, it's still pretty juicy. And see what I can do with that. Because I had put some pretty expressive brush strokes in there and I think that's what this needed kind of like you got colors reflecting in the wet water the wet uh, streets I wish I bought more of those little daisy, um, little flower ceramic palettes. That would be nice to have. We go check. You got them at the Dollar Tree, you said? No, no I got them on the Consumer right. Crafts, and they were like four dollars. And I would, and I did have two in my basket. I'm like, oh, Lindsay, this is old, Lindsay, not the Lindsay since the Mari method. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, listened, I actually listened to an interview with her. Oh yeah. 
and she doesn't speak English. She doesn't, no. so she has a translator, which I didn't realize. But she's really she's like it's not necessarily about getting getting rid of everything, but the stuff that you keep is important and has meaning, and that it stays organized. It's not like. It's not minimalism. Yeah, that's she was kind of saying that it's not minimalism, but the stuff that you do have brings you joy, you know, has a story, and is you keep it all organized and neat. Right. Uh, Ashley Smith, when you are creating your trial creations before a live, and then you do the live, what do you do with all the duplicates? Well, I don't always create one beforehand. Um, sometimes they sell. Like sometimes I'll get a situation where. I will have several people ask to buy the painting that I'm working on, and in that case, I just sell them both. Um, or, I mean, I, sometimes I work in a sketchbook for the the practice one, and then it just stays in my sketchbook. Um, but, or I'll put it in my shop to sell. So that's pretty much it. It's no reasonable offers refused. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, th I was thinking I had to switch over to working mainly in sketchbooks so that I don't, you know, because I have so much, I have so much inventory. <laughs> you do have a lot of inventory. All right, so I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna dry this and then see what I th might think it needs at that point. It's gotten kind of dark there, so I think uh, I actually might lift up a little bit in the lights again. Oh, the other lights there. Yeah, it's a question. Yes, uh, Silix, Silla, are you going to use white gouache for highlights or stay with inks? Um, I didn't in the other one. I was almost thinking I might use a pastel for a highlight. Um, if you guys want to see that, I think I might have a box of pastels. Um, I don't know. Do you have a little box of pastels somewhere? Let in me that? put the laptop down before All I right, knock she's, it off. She's going to look for see if I have pastels or pastel pencils or something handy, and I'm going to dry this. And maybe, because I do feel like it's gotten pretty dark. Uh, those are watercolor crayons. I might be able to use them. I think I might have like a little box of favorite pastel pastels in there. Pencils, pencils, pencils. Lots of pencils. These are all pencils. Pastels right there. 64 half. Yes, that's it. That's it. So then you can see if anybody wants me to add the pastels Way to this one. On the bottom. Oh, and then you have these two extra fine soft pastels. Oh yeah, I'll grab those too. Hold right my hand. Apparently, I didn't drink enough coffee today. <laughs> yeah, and I went through like I, coffee and tea was not tasting good to me for like a couple of weeks. I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I just need to like cleanse my palate because I mean, be. nothing like a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. Oh, it's like my favorite thing. Say. And I'm like, it's not tasting good. What is you know? I can't have. When's this. the last time you cleaned your coffee pot, though? It could be you. Need you to have to clean those things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's very easy to do. Uh, Tiffany Gray, I'm not very good at mixing my own colors. Are there any practice drills to do to get better? Um, well, in my new watercolor course, I do have a whole lesson on color mixing. And then there is also a free video on my um, channel about using a split parent primary palette. So either of those options would get you going. Basically, when you're mixing colors, you want to look at the two colors that you have that are closest to what you want to get and mix those two together. And you want to try to stick to single pigment colors when you're purchasing paint because those colors are always going to give you the more saturated results or the, you know, less muddy. All right, so does anybody say whether I should use pastels on this or not? Oh, let me, I was answering oh, the question. Sure. Pastels? How do people feel about pastels? Let's all vote. Pastels. I don't see any answers, so. Hmm. Well, they got a 30 second delay, too, so. Yes. Pastels, pastels. We were all talking about diet and eating good food. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to cut the junk out. Mm -hmm. Look at the angle here. See what, I, see what I got. Oh, my door's a little crooked. <laughs> That's oh. okay. It's an old building. It could be leaning. That's true. That's true. And I'm almost thinking that, like, my the black does not look as dark as it did in the other one because I, I think I had too much color underneath, but a black pastel would... We'll cut through that. Uh, yes, people want to see. Okay, so Leia, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm actually going to grab one of these because my white's about out of that kit. Yeah, we're having lots of yeses. Okay, cool. So okay, I'm going to hit the whites first because that's where I felt like I really 
kind of lost it. And I like the glow that you can get with the pastel. So if I put the, uh, the pastel down, then I can kind of smudge it and get a little haze around. Oops, battery <laughs> or plug in, whatever. As long as it all stays working, plugged in and working. Uh, Ian Jackson, Lindsay, would you use ma a mask for highlights on this? Um, I, you know, I probably wouldn't because I wouldn't want, to, I think this is more like a free flowing type of project and I wouldn't want to be stuck with a certain hard highlight somewhere. You know, I'd want to kind of be able to alter it as I go along. A little yellow in there, too. My goodness, your stomach is growling. You must yes. be looking forward to that pizza tonight. Apparently, well, I didn't eat lunch before I came over either. My stomach wasn't feeling 100% this morning, so oh, no. I stuck to just some water and coffee to see how it all worked out. And apparently now it's worked out because it's growling, so <laughs> it's, on, it's on the mend. Do a little bit of white. White light kind of spilling out. Plus it can be kind of like highlights in the wet streets. We'll have to uh, compare one with pastel and one without too. So that'll be kind of nice because the other one didn't have pastel on it. Uh, Gracie Shack, what pastels do you recommend for someone new to it? Um, well, I think it depends on what you can find in your area. These favorite pastel ones weren't very expensive. It was a set of 60 um gosh i'm thinking it was i'm thinking it was around 20 dollars, but this was a while ago it might be more now but it shouldn't be insanely expensive always keep an eye for coupons mm -hmm. coupons 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 well she's in the uk i don't think they do the coupons quite oh. as much as we do here <sighs> unfortunate yeah and you can see how the black pastel really does kind of cut through stuff um it seems to be like a darker black than the paper even in, than the, our, our watercolor and pastel, like even black pastel is darker than black pastel paper. So I know a lot of pastel artists that will use black uh, because it's it's darker than the paper. I don't know if I want to go over those lines or not. Yes, yeah, some I should blow. Don't blow pastel dust. You know, I just <laughs> don't do that. These are non-toxic. I do, do know what that. I do. Do what I say, not what I do. Yeah. I'm gonna rub this black in a little bit though, because otherwise it's just gonna smudge on everything, anybody that touches it. Now that's another thing to mention. If you use like a fixative on top of um, on top of this, it's gonna darken those pastel colors. So um, so that will make it a little crisper as well. And I think it might even darken the liquid watercolor, especially the carbon black. That carbon black is a different type of sheen to the other colors, almost like an ink, but it's like a, a matte. Uh, Kobe Ozias, I got a set of charcoal and pastel pencils. There aren't a lot of colors, so I use them together. Can I use the white charcoal pencil for highlights too? Yep. Uh, as do Paris, would colored pencils work as well? Sure. Okay, well, I think I'm going to call that done. What do you well, think of the pastel? Do you like the pastel? I do like the pastel, the, especially in the windows. It really kind of adds like a little pop. Yeah, it really does make it stand out. Little... I think I like my demonstration one that I did earlier better, though. Mm. We can compare. So this is the one we just did sure. um, with the pastel on top, and this was the original one that I did earlier. I seem to have a better a better handling of the watercolor. I think that I lost some values as we went. I think I got my background too dark on the demonstration piece. So if you're doing this after the fact at home, I would probably recommend keeping it lighter as long as you can, and uh, then slowly build it, like adding more drippy layers for your darks. But get that first layer down fairly light so that you don't get um, so you don't have such a lack of contrast. But it's kind of neat because they're both completely different. Like even though yeah. the colors the same colors each time, yeah. but like that one had more 
more greens, almost Van Gogh colors. Mm -hmm. And this one has more um, modern. And I wonder if it's because I was kind of looking at this one when I was painting this instead of looking at the photo. And this one I was looking at the photo mm -hmm. from graphic stock. So, um, so that could be why too. Hmm. That'd be uh, funny. You could do a whole series for your wall, like oh, four it would, different ones. It's they're kind of pretty, yeah. yeah. There were, you know, and it was funny because the graphic stock did have a lot of different um, of that that same feeling. Mm -hmm. It must have been the same artist that did all those photographs or mm -hmm. altered the digital paintings um, because there were a few that had the same feel to them that were kind of pretty. Um, but I've linked to everything I've used in the video description. I want to thank Jerry's Artorama for sponsoring today's video and um, go check them out if you need any of these supplies. Also, um, I want to mention my watercolor course. It is linked up in the video description. The price is half off for the month of May, so it's normal, normally $79. It's $39 for the month of May. Great Mother's Day gift. That is a good so, Mother's Day yeah. gift. Yeah. It's coming right up. Yeah. I, the only thing is I don't have the ability to do gift certificates in my store, but if you wanted to buy this for your mom, you just want to make her an account, pay for it, and then give her the login credentials so she can go in there and take the class. I would use her email address to make the account, though, just so she can, if she forgets her password or whatever she'll be able to get herself uh, situated and back in um, I don't know if my mom when she doesn't use a computer very much mm. <laughs> I probably have to do it on her computer and <laughs> here you go you're logged in mom um, but I think that's it did I forget anything no I think you got it uh, just one last quick question sure uh, Michael Beckett can you use soft pastel and Conte crayon together you can I would recommend using the Conte first because it is harder um, so like when you're generally building up layers of pastel your harder one your harder ones will not stick on top of the softer one they just want to kind of scrape away the softer stuff so you start with the hardest pastels and work your way soft um, so like just softer and softer pastels as you go on because those really buttery soft pastels will stick on top of the harder pastels but not vice versa all right we caught up yes I'm just awesome me and Brenda were talking about something so oh. <laughs> okay well thank you guys so much for watching have a happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there and um, have a great weekend for everybody else thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting